Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be covering separation of concerns in software architecture and handling database migrations in DevOps. And also I'll explain resilience in DevOps. Guys, I have uploaded a complete DevOps subject tutorials. I'll provide that link in description. You can watch from there. If you are watching this video for the first time, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. At first, I will explain separation of concerns in software architecture. Separation of concerns means dividing entire program into various sections based on their functionalities so that each section runs independently without affecting other services. Changes made in one section will not affect other sections. Guys, I will give an example so that you can clearly understand this definition. Guys, for example, I want to create Kali application. Let us say Kali application contains four pages, student login page, student results page, student attendance page and as well as faculty details page. Total there are four pages. So instead of writing this complete code in one place, what I will do is, I will divide this complete code into four modules. First module contains code related to student login page and whereas second module contains code related to student results page, third module contains code related to student attendance page and whereas fourth module contains code related to faculty details page. I will show these four modules separately in different folders. So, changes made in one module will not affect other modules. For example, I want to update the student results page. So, without changing first module, third module and fourth module, directly I will open the second module and I will update code related to student results page. So, changes made in one module will not affect other modules. For example, let us say the student attendance page is not working well. Even though student attendance page is not working well, remaining pages will work well because they are not related to each other. All are separated. So, changes made in one module will not affect other modules. So, separation of concerns mean dividing entire program into various sections based on their functionalities so that each section runs independently without affecting other services. Changes made in one section will not affect other sections. Guys, separation of concerns will improve maintainability. Maintainability is nothing but updating specific part of code without updating entire code. And also it will improve scalability. Scalability means we can easily update new features to that particular software. And also it will improve readability. If you store complete code in one place, then it is very hard to read. But if you separate code into various sections, then it is very easy to understand because it will look very small. And fourth one is separation of concerns will improve debugging. As complete code is separated into various sections, we can easily find and fix errors. This is meaning of debugging. I already explained this example. Just you need to explain this Kali application example. These are some real world examples where separation of concerns is implemented. First one is modal view controller architecture. MVC is classic example of separation of concerns because it divides application into three components. First one is modal, next one is view and next one is controller. Where model will manage data and business logic and view handles presentation layer and whereas controller act as interface that is controller act as middle layer between model and view. This controller will process inputs. Web applications are examples of model view controller architecture. Next example is microservices architecture as microservices architecture also follows separation of concerns because in microservice architecture we will break our application into various parts based on the services as each service will perform certain tasks. E-commerce websites and applications are example of microservice architecture. And third one is client server architecture. As client server architecture is divided into two main components, they are client and server. So this client server architecture is example of separation of concerns. Social media applications are example of client server architecture. And whereas last one is layered architecture. Separation of concerns is implemented in this layered architecture because this layered architecture will divide application into various layers like presentation layer, application layer, business logic layer and data access layer. Each layer has separate role like presentation layer will handle user interface, application layer will handle business logic, business logic layer will handle business rules and logic and data access layer will handle database. So online banking system is example of this layered architecture. These are four real world examples where SOC is implemented. Next I will explain how to handle database migrations in DevOps. Guys, migration is nothing but transferring something from one place to another place. And whereas database migration mean 
transferring data from one database to another database. This process can not only include just moving the data itself, but also transforming it to fit the new database schema, updating database structure and ensuring data integrity and consistency throughout the migration. Guys, I will give one simple example so that you can clearly understand definition. Guys, database schema is nothing but overall structure of database. For example, let us say there is college database. In this college database, there will be student table, staff table, admin staff table, and student results table and courses table and so on. For example, the student table is connected to student results table and staff table is connected to admin staff table. So this overall structure of database like tables, columns and their connections, we call this entire structure as schema. Except data remaining everything is known as schema. For example, I created new database with name my college and I modified some tables like I inserted new columns in student table, new columns in staff table, new columns in courses table and so on. So now I want to move data from college database to my college database. But transferring data from one database to another database is very tough. It is not an easy task. Whenever you transfer data from one database to another database, then this data must fit to this new database schema. Schema is nothing but structure. This data must fit to this new database structure. So database migration is not only moving data from one database to another database, but also whenever you transfer data from one database to another database, then the data must fit to new database schema and ensuring data integrity and consistency throughout the migration. Guys, data integrity and consistency is nothing but correctness of data. Whenever you transfer data, the data must be correct. There must not be any loss of data. In DevOps, handling database migrations means managing the process of moving data from one database to another database while ensuring it's done smoothly without any disturbance. This is important because changes to the database structure or data need to be matched with application updates to avoid errors. Guys, whenever you update database, updating database must not affect application. If you don't update database properly, then your application will not work. So you need to update database properly in order to avoid errors. In DevOps, we'll use various kinds of techniques in order to perform database migration. That is nothing but in order to transfer data from one database to another database. And the first technique is version control. Version control is nothing but Git software. One of the essential techniques for database migration in DevOps is use of version control for both application code and the database schema. Guess whenever you develop any application, you need to store both application code and as well as database code in Git. After storing code in Git, you will create pipeline in order to perform continuous integration and continuous deployment. Whenever you create CI-CD pipeline in order to test and deploy software, in DevOps there are various kinds of tools like liquid-based tool and flyway tool. You need to connect these tools with CI-CD pipeline. Whenever you connect these tools with CI-CD pipeline, whenever you update database, then automatically it will update application code. Second technique is schema migration tools. Whenever you perform database migration in DevOps, you can use schema migration tools. Example of schema migration tools are SQL server data tools and MySQL workbench. These both tools are examples of schema migration tools. Whenever you want to update database schema, that is whenever you want to update database structure, instead of modifying complete SQL code, you can modify only specific changes without modifying complete code and rest of the code is automatically updated by using schema migration tools. So schema migration tools are used to automate making and running SQL scripts. Instead of modifying complete code manually, you can modify only specific part of code without modifying complete code. Rest everything is automatically modified by using schema migration tools. Third one is data migration tools. Schema migration tools are used to modify only schema that is structure of database. But if you want to transfer data from one database to another database, then you can use data migration tools. For example, Sometimes there will be huge amount of data in database. Manually transferring data from one database to another database is very tough. So by using data migration tools, you can automate this process. You can easily transfer data from one database to another database. AWS data migration services and as well as Azure data factory. These both are examples of data migration tools. Even after performing database migration, you need to test your migrated database. Like you need to check performance test, security test and so on on that particular migrated database. 
while testing if there are any errors you need to fix that errors in order to perform testing on migrated database you can use tools like sql test and jmeter this is all about handling database migrations in devops next i will explain resilience in devops resilience in devops means the ability of system to recover quickly from problems and continue working smoothly it ensures that services remain available even when there are issues like failures or high traffic guys i will give an example guys for example if you consider amazon website whenever you open amazon website it will be available to you maximum amazon website don't get any kind of problem even if amazon website get any kind of problem it can recover very quickly within short period of time this is because of by following devops amazon achieved resilience another example is google whenever you open google search and as well as gmail they will be available to you this is because google achieved resilience by using devops how organizations achieve resilience using devops first one is devops support automation in devops each and every task is automated normally human beings will not perform any kind of task automatically system will perform various kinds of task so automate task like deployment and testing reduce human errors and speed up recovery so even if any kind of error occurs system will solve that problem instead of human beings second one is continuous integration and continuous deployment whenever developer update small part of software then automate testings will takes place so it is very easy to find errors and solve those errors so regularly integrate and deploy small changes make it easier to find and fix issues quickly third one is monitoring and logging guys logging is nothing but recording complete information about software recording each and every operation of software is known as logging in devops there are various kinds of tools available in order to continuously monitor particular software so the software will constantly check those problems so that we can easily identify issues and solve a problem fourth one is infrastructure as a code hardware software networks servers databases all this comes under infrastructure guys whenever you develop any software then you need to set hardware you need to set database and you need to set servers so instead of manually setting all those things devops use automation based on the software by using various kinds of automation tools devops will configure hardware software servers database and so on and fifth one is microservices architecture microservices architecture is nothing but breaking our application into various parts based on service instead of storing complete code in one place what we will do is we will break that application into various parts based on services so even if one service fails remaining services will work and sixth one is regular backups and disaster recovery plans guys backup is nothing but storing multiple copies of our data so even if data loss occur we can easily restore the data and also we need to prepare various kinds of plans in order to recover from major failures and seventh one is scalability scalability mean designing system that will handle high load automatically guys there are three popular companies using devops in order to build resilient architecture another first one is netflix netflix use automation continuous integration and deployment and as well as microservices architecture netflix company use one tool called kiosk monkey by using this kiosk monkey tool netflix wantedly tries to fail application and it will check whether application is causing failure or not this is how netflix built resilient architecture and second one is amazon amazon use automation and as well as infrastructure as a code and as well as scalability scalability is nothing but designing system to handle high load automatically so even during high traffic periods amazon will be available to you for example if you consider festival seasons like amazon great indian festival during that festival seasons millions of people will access amazon even during high traffic period amazon will be available to you and third one is google google utilizes monitoring logging and as well as automated recovery so that is why google services like google search and as well as gmail are highly available these are three companies using devops for building resilient architecture 